Hi everyone, my name is Charlie Cater from ESTNN and today I'm pleased to be joined by Boston Breaches head coach Zed and starting player Nero. Thank you both for joining me today. Pleasure to be here, man. Oh, pleasure. Uh, so first of all, it's a, it's a new year and that of course means a brand new Call of Duty game. Uh, what mm. are both your initial thoughts on Vanguard so far? Go on, Joe, you play, them, you play it, dude, so... <laughs> it's great. <laughs> in a few tweaks here and there and the game will be the best game ever made. <clears throat> I feel like you're lying, dude. I thought you just told a massive lie. Uh... No, I mean, for me, I don't, I don't play it too often. I mean, watching it every day. The game seems fun, dude, but I, I mean, again, I don't play the game, so, you know, it's a completely different side of things. Yeah, the, uh, game, the, game, the game is really fun to play. If you... If you're a fast player that likes engagements, this is probably the game for you. But yeah. I can imagine being a slower player that likes to play the game more methodical. It's probably a pain in the ass to get on every day and play. Yeah, because so. you're just going to get slide cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> Camera. Yeah, and so, well, this season, you have both joined the Boston Breach heading into the CDL. Um, how does it feel to be, to be entering the league under a brand new franchise? Okay, I'll, I'll take this question, dude. Um, I mean, Coming, coming off, obviously, I've been, in, I've been in the franchise scene since it was first introduced, you know, Paris, then London. Um, so just working with the guys, even in the last month or two, it's, it's a completely different style of doing things. And, you know, they're passionate and they show that they actually care about everyone that's underneath them. Not, not no hate to London or Paris or anything. You know, everyone, every company and business does things their own way. But Boston's really got it, like, down to a T. And... You know, it's, it's exciting that we can give, you know, me as a coach now, I can give players the opportunity and everything they need to succeed as a player. Um, and they don't have to worry about any external factors um, and can just focus solely on the game. Yeah, and, and for you, Zed, again, uh, you're the head coach of this team. Uh, so, so how did this roster initially form? And what are maybe one or two things that you think this squad has that, that others in the league don't? Um, when me and Dens, who's the general manager, um, when we were deciding kind of who we wanted to, to put on the roster, obviously we were the last team to build a, a team. So we had kind of the pick of the, you know, the last 30 or so players that maybe deserved a shot. Uh, so for us, it was building not just a team that we were confident in, but a team that we think has the highest skill ceiling individually as players. Um, because we're not here to be a top eight team. We're here to, to win. Um, so we want to do everything that takes to do it. So, you know, we looked at players like Dill, uh, Neuro, like Cap, and they haven't had a shot yet. And some people might, you know, might doubt that decision. But from what we saw in it, you know, I, I always say you either have it or you don't. And for, for the players we picked up, we really think they do have it. So it's just about, you know, educating them in the pro, the pro side of things because professional players are, you know, quite different to, to amateur. So, you know, it's, Building good habits and hopefully bringing championships home to Boston, which will be uh, pretty good. But in terms of what we have, I think we have uh, we have young, hungry talent with a mix of veterans that know maybe this might be their last chance to to prove that they deserve to be here. Um, you know, we've got Tej and and, and Zin that. A lot of people might say don't deserve to be here again for a, you know, a, another year. But like, like I said, me and Dens have full confidence in those guys and we think they're, they're doing a great job so far. So I'm excited, man. Yeah, and, and Nero, this will be your first year in the, in the Call of Duty League. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you looking forward to getting the season underway? And, and how has it felt to team with two veterans of the competitive scene in Memphis and TJ, as, as uh, Zed just said there? Of course, I'm, I'm really excited for this season to start. I always wanted to, to prove myself because I've been in, in the bottom of the barrel because of, la of last year. Even though I was on LAG Academy, we weren't really the greatest, so our reputation wasn't really there. But um, I'm super excited even to play with Zen and Teach because they, they have a lot of experience in, in the league. They know what they're talking about. They have a, um, a, especially Zen, he has a bunch of leadership too. So he, he's just a, a leader through and through. So, him teaching me the ways and Teach teaching me the ways along Zach and Dins, it's going to be a great year. Oh, yeah. 
And, and finishing off this roster is obviously Capsidal. Uh, we've all seen him frying in scrims. Uh, but can you tell me sort of a little bit about him and, and what you think he brings to this roster? Um, in terms of, you know, talking about Cap, it's yeah, funny, a lot, a lot of people doubted, the, again, doubted the pickup quite a lot. And for me and Denz, it was, okay, this guy, he's shown that he can do it. Like, you know, with these cups, maybe again, not against the greatest opponents, but like I said, like I said prior, you, when you look at a player, look at a player like a BZ, for example, on, in World War II, like that guy didn't really do anything, but he got, he got given a chance because people saw something in him. They surrounded him with veterans and he flourished into the player he is today. And that's kind of the approach we're going with Cap is, you know, we see a lot of potential in Cap. And as long as he, you know, keeps a good head on his shoulders and, and listens and learns, um, you know, and he has got a lot to learn because he is a new player. He's never experienced anything like, like this. So, um, making, like I said, making sure he keeps a level head and absorbing all that information from everyone around him. He could turn into something special, and you know that's what we're we're planning on, and we'll do everything in our power to to make that happen. Yeah, he's a beast on and off the game. Oh yeah, he's a beast, all right? <laughs> yeah. he's a beast. <laughs> now the the CDL schedule this year sees teams play around three weeks of online qualifiers uh, before heading into a major. Uh, how do you feel about this new schedule and and how it differs to to previous years? Uh, I'm not too. I'm not too fussed about it as a coach. Um, you know, we're going to have all of our players in Boston. So, you know, it, it's going to be a team environment. We're going to be nice and close. And I always think that's the main thing. As, as long as you're not playing online, doesn't really matter as long as you're playing together. Um, yeah, ping pong. In, well. in the same room. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, might, it might make a little bit of a difference online. But, you know, in, in times before, teams that have always been good online have always pretty much been good at events too. You know, you don't see FaZe winning every event, but sucking online. They just, you know, they kind of, they're good on both, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, it, it doesn't really bother me too much. And with, with times that we're in, you know, now with COVID and stuff, it's, this is the best that we can do. Um, so you've just got to, you know, play with the, the hand you were dealt. Yeah, you just got to deal with it. Deal with it, man. Stay, yeah. stay positive. Yep. Now, before the season officially gets underway, we have to kick off Classic, obviously, next week. Um, we've seen some controversy recently with the Sniper GA. I think last time I heard Snipers are in for the kickoff Classic. Um, could you maybe, for people who, who don't quite know what's going on, uh, speak a little bit about why there's talk of GA and Snipers and sort of how it affects the game? Okay, so when, when there is talks about you know not using certain equipment certain weapons it's all to promote a better competitive play for the players whether that's more entertaining for the viewers or not it's just you know we want to we want to give the fairest chance to the teams and when you've got a sniper that has aim assist and you know whether it's op or not that time will tell but as players and staff around the cdl you know, many think it is pretty, you know, pretty OP and, and needs to either be nerfed or not used. Um, again, it's just all for competitive integrity. So, you know, I saw it as a bit of backlash on social media, but it's hard for people to understand when they're not the ones playing the game for the amounts of money that the players are playing for. Um, and it's hard to even think about that. You know, so there's a, there's a big difference in watching and playing which a lot of people don't understand yeah uh yeah and, and control has had its issues as well obviously um <laughs> do you know if we'll be seeing control in the kickoff classic next week at all i think we will be um yeah, yeah we'll personally be i don't mind control um when you look at it from codcaster it makes sense it reminds me of controls in the past black ops 4 you know had, had really good control um maps and stuff but the problem with this game is we don't have good maps yeah which we only have two suck. we only have two playable maps we have control. two playable maps and them them two maps maybe need a little tweaking maybe yeah. aren't the greatest um but other than that the game mode the game mode itself isn't bad it's just the maps and yeah. that's what people don't understand the maps just suck 
Yeah, um, they're so terrible for the game mode. Yeah, and it just it's almost unplayable on some of them. So you know, hopefully in the future, maybe we get some better maps that we can put into the rotation. Um, and then control will be a bit more fun for the players and everyone watching. Uh, yeah, and, and in the kickoff classic, your first game is putting you up against the New York subline. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. How are you guys feeling heading into that matchup? I feel really confident. We've been, I know it's just scrims, but we've been playing really good in scrims. So we just got to carry that over into the kickoff, but I'm really confident for the, to win the kickoff. Yeah, and, and, and something I'm trying to, you know, drill into, into cap and a little bit to deal is as much as people talk about LAN being different, it's no different, man. Like, you play the same way, you're going to do the same things. And the reason, you know, people might drop off at LAN is because they don't have that same confidence they do online. So as long as we bring that same confidence as a team, the same energy, um, hopefully it's a successful weekend. And, you know, we'll learn a lot as a team uh, going into the, the real stuff, which will be the first uh, couple proper league games that we have. Yeah, and, and as you said, uh, Nero, you've been performing well in scrims and we've all got to see that from you guys streaming scr scrims and I think a lot of the community have been appreciating that. Um, people have been sort of placing you guys as a top six, maybe even a, a top four team at times um, heading into the season. Where, where mm -hmm. do you guys believe you stand in the league at the moment? Um, for us, just creating this team and not having a lot of practice compared to other teams being top four, is is crazy to think about because there's these teams have been scrimming since the beginning of the game and we literally just created our team like three weeks ago and we're already considered a top four team that's that's crazy but i think that's where we stand because we've absolutely been frying so i do believe that we're a top four team top five team yeah and and along with that comes quite a bit of pressure from the community facing you guys yeah. as a top four team. Um, how do you deal with that pressure and that sort of expectation to succeed in your first year with, with a brand new roster? Um, I kind of don't even really feel the pressure because you just, you just have to shake it off. I mean, obviously you feel the pressure, just you, you just can't feel it, if that makes sense. Because then it's gonna, then you won't be able to bring your A game. So the way I think about it is just, it's just an, just another match, another, just another scrim. It's not even against pros. It's just one of those. You just gotta, you just gotta play, and you gotta play your best and give it your all. Yeah, and Zed has having two rookies on your roster um, led to you having to maybe help a bit more with with dealing with pressure and things as a head coach as as you. You've had to do it before yourself. Um, I think maybe in the future it will, especially with lands coming. Um, but you know, as I said, I'm I'm confident in all these guys, and it's important for the guys to know that nobody else's opinion matters apart from the people within this team. Um, which is what we've emphasised since the beginning is, you know, I trust you, Dens trust you, your teammates trust you. So if you have a bad map, that doesn't matter at all, man. Like, don't listen to anyone on the outside. You know, if you have a bad map, you come back for a redemption in the next series. You don't dwell on it. You don't You don't beat yourself up. I've done it plenty of times as a player, and it eats at you. And, you know, you think about them, uh, you know, now being retired, you think about them days all the time. You know, what if, what if you done you done this? And what if you didn't make that mistake? But it's important for the players to, you know, not not think about that too much and not give in to the, you know, the anger and the, the hatred of social media sometimes because it can be a rough place, man. And, you know, as long as the players are happy and they're enjoying themselves and learning, you know, that's all I ask for as a coach. So, And if I have any problems, I'm, I'm like an open book, man. I'm, I might be your coach, but I'm also your friend. So you can come to me and talk to me about any problems you have. Yeah, talk to him about anything. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, to finish things off, uh, what, does, what does a successful season for Boston Breach look like this year? Um, w winning. <laughs> we'd love that's, to win. That's, 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 we'd love to win. That's obviously the goal for every organization, even players, is to win. But I'd say just trying our best and giving it 100% every single day. 
because if we get a hundred percent every single day, that means we were trying at least trying to do something with this, and not just oh we got a spot. Let's just th like not try as hard because we made it, but now you you actually got to try super hard every day. Yeah, I think it's um, you know, be, being part of Boston, you know, Boston is notorious for being the city of of champions and bringing trophies home in in all, all different directions. So for us. You know, winning would be lovely, and it would be a great achievement for everyone, and I'd be proud of everyone that would be part of it. Um, but as Dil said, it's it's about going out there, giving a hundred percent of your your efforts, and looking back, not having any regrets, and yeah, no regrets, you know, yeah. and and not thinking, wow, maybe if we tried harder, you know, we could have done something. I I don't want any players to have that regret. Um, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, so I want them to really enjoy it and. Hopefully, you know, we can give them every tool necessary to succeed um, and and just focus on the game and focus on winning. Yeah, well, that's everything I've got for you guys today. I uh, really appreciate you both taking time to speak to me and uh, of best of luck of in course. the season. Thank you appreciate so much. It a lot, man. I appreciate it.